Guinea-Bissau. Guinea-Bissau, officially the Republic of Guinea-Bissau, is a country in West Africa that covers with an estimated population of. Guinea-Bissau was once part of the Kingdom of Gabu, as well as part of the Mali Empire. Parts of this kingdom persisted until the 18th century, while a few others were under some rule by the Portuguese Empire since the 16th century. In the 19th century, it was colonized as Portuguese Guinea. Upon independence, declared in 1973 and recognized in 1974, the name of its capital, Bissau, was added to the country's name to prevent confusion with Guinea, formerly French Guinea. Guinea Bissau has a history of political instability since independence, and no elected president has successfully served a full five year term. Only 14% of the population speaks non creolized Portuguese. Established as both the official and national language. Portuguese exists in Creole continuum with Criollo, a Portuguese Creole spoken by half the population, 44%, and an even larger number speaks at a second tongue. The remainder speak a variety of native African languages. There are diverse religions in Guinea Bissau with no one religion having a majority. The CIA World Factbook, 2018, states there are about 40% Muslims, 22% Christians. 15% animists and 18% unspecified or other. The country's per capita gross domestic product is one of the lowest in the world. The sovereign state of Guinea Bissau is a member of the United Nations, African Union, Economic Community of West African States, Organization of Islamic Cooperation, Community of Portuguese Language Countries Louisiana Francophonie and the South Atlantic Peace and Cooperation Zone, and was a member of the now defunct Latin Union. Guinea-Bissau was once part of the Kingdom of Gabu, part of the Mali Empire, parts of this kingdom persisted until the 18th century. Other parts of the territory in the current country were considered by the Portuguese as part of their empire. Portuguese Guinea was known as the Slave Coast, as it was a major area for the exportation of African slaves by Europeans to the Western Hemisphere. Early reports of Europeans reaching this area include those of the Venetian Vise Catamostos voyage of 1455, the 1479 to 1480 voyage by Flemish French trader Eustache de la Fosse, and Diogo Cao. In the 1480s, this Portuguese explorer reached the Congo River in the lands of Bay Congo, setting up the foundations off modern Angola, some 4,200 kilometers down the African coast from Guinea Bissau. Although the rivers and coast of this area were among the first places colonized by the Portuguese, who set up trading posts in the 16th century, they did not explore the interior until the 19th century. The local African rulers in Guinea, some of whom prospered greatly from the slave trade, controlled the inland trade and did not allow the Europeans into the interior. They kept them in the fortified coastal settlements where the trading took place. African communities that fought back against slave traders also distrusted European adventurers and would-be settlers. The Portuguese in Guinea were largely restricted to the ports of Bissau and Cachu. A small number of European settlers established isolated farms along Bissau's inland rivers. For a brief period in the 1790s, the British tried to establish a rival foothold on an offshore island, at Bolama. But by the 19th century the Portuguese were sufficiently secure in Bissau to regard the neighboring coastline as their own special territory, also up north in part of present South Senegal. An armed rebellion, begun in 1956 by the African Party for the Independence of Guinea and Cape Verde, PAGEC, under the leadership of Emilcar Cabral gradually consolidated its hold on the then Portuguese Guinea. Unlike guerrilla movements in other Portuguese colonies, the page rapidly extended its military control over large portions of the territory, aided by the jungle-like terrain, its easily reached borderlines with neighboring allies, and large quantities of arms from Cuba, China, the Soviet Union, and left-leaning African countries. Cuba also agreed to supply artillery experts, doctors, and technicians. The page even managed to acquire a significant anti-aircraft capability in order to defend itself against aerial attack. By 1973, the page was in control of many parts of Guinea, although the movement suffered a setback in January 1973 when Cabral was assassinated. Independence was unilaterally declared on September 24, 1973. Recognition became universal following April 25, 1974 socialist-inspired military coup in Portugal, which overthrew Lisbon's Estado Novo regime. Luís Cabral, brother of Emilcar and co-founder of PAGEC, was appointed the first president of Guinea-Bissau. Following independence, the PAGEC killed thousands of local Guinean soldiers who had fought alongside the Portuguese army against the guerrillas. 
Some escaped to settle in Portugal or other African nations. One of the massacres occurred in the town of Basura. In 1980, the page acknowledged in its newspaper No Pincha, dated November 29, 1980, that many Guinean soldiers had been executed and buried in unmarked collective graves in the woods of Cumara, Portugal, and Mansaba. The country was controlled by a revolutionary council until 1984. The first multi party elections were held in 1994. An army uprising in May 1998 led to the Guinea-Bissau civil war and the president's ousting in June 1999. Elections were held again in 2000, and Kumba Iala was elected president. In September 2003, a military coup was conducted. The military arrested Iala on the charge of being unable to solve the problems. After being delayed several times, legislative elections were held in March 2004. A mutiny of military factions in October 2004 resulted in the death of the head of the armed forces and caused widespread unrest. In June 2005, presidential elections were held for the first time since the coup that deposed Yala. Yala returned as the candidate for the PRS, claiming to be the legitimate president of the country, but the election was won by former President Joao Bernardo Vieira, deposed in the 1999 coup. Vieira beat Malambakai Sana in a runoff election. Sana initially refused to concede, claiming that tampering and electoral fraud occurred in two constituencies including the capital, Bissau. Despite reports of arms entering the country prior to the election and some disturbances during campaigning, including attacks on government offices by an identified gunman, foreign election monitors described the 2005 election overall as calm and organized. Three years later, Page won a strong parliamentary majority, with 67 of 100 seats. In the parliamentary election held in November 2008. In November 2008, President Vieira's official residence was attacked by members of the armed forces, killing a guard but leaving the president unharmed. On March 2, 2009, however, Vieira was assassinated by what preliminary reports indicated to be a group of soldiers avenging the death of the head of Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Batista Tagnawe, who had been killed in an explosion the day before. Vieira's death did not trigger widespread violence, but there were signs of turmoil in the country, according to the advocacy group Swiss Peace. Military leaders in the country pledged to respect the constitutional order of succession. National Assembly Speaker Raimundo Pereira was appointed as an interim president until a nationwide election on June 28, 2009. It was won by Malambakai Sana of the PAGEC, against Kumba Iala as the presidential candidate of the PRS. On January 9, 2012, President Sana died of complications from diabetes, and Pereira was again appointed as an interim president. On the evening of April 12, 2012, members of the country's military staged a coup d'etat and arrested the interim president and a leading presidential candidate. Former Vice Chief of Staff, General Mamadou Touré Karuma, assumed control of the country in the transitional period and started negotiations with opposition parties. Guinea Bissau is a republic. In the past, the government had been highly centralized. Multi-party governance was not established until mid-1991. The president is the head of state and the prime minister is the head of government. Since 1974, no president has successfully served a full five-year term. At the legislative level, a unicameral assembly a nacional popular, National People's Assembly, is made up of 100 members. They are popularly elected from multi-member constituencies to serve a four-year term. The judicial system is headed by a tribunal supremo de justicia, Supreme Court, made up of nine justices appointed by the president, they serve at the pleasure of the president. The two main political parties are the PAGEC, African Party for the Independence of Guinea and Cape Verde, and the PRS, Party for Social Renewal. There are more than 20 minor parties. Guinea-Bissau follows a non-aligned foreign policy and seeks friendly and cooperative relations with a wide variety of states and organizations. A 2008 estimate put the size of the Guinea-Bissau armed forces at around 4,000 personnel. Guinea-Bissau is divided into eight regions, and one autonomous sector. These, in turn, are subdivided into 37 sectors. The regions are Guinea-Bissau is bordered by Senegal to the north and Guinea to the south and east, with the Atlantic Ocean to its west. It lies mostly between latitudes 11 degrees and 13 degrees north. A small area is south of 11 degrees, and longitudes 13 degrees and 17 degrees west. At, the country is larger in size than Taiwan or Belgium. It lies at a low altitude, its highest point is. 
The terrain of is mostly low coastal plain with swamps of Guinean mangroves rising to Guinean forests of Anna Mosaic in the east. Its monsoon-like rainy season alternates with periods of hot, dry harmaton winds blowing from the Sahara. The Bijagos archipelago lies off of the mainland. Guinea-Bissau is warm all year around and there is little temperature fluctuation, it averages. The average rainfall for Bissau is although this is almost entirely accounted for during the rainy season which falls between June and September slash October. From December through April, the country experiences drought. Severe environmental problems include deforestation, soil erosion, overgrazing and overfishing. Guinea-Bissau's GDP per capita is one of the lowest in the world, and its human development index is one of the lowest on earth. More than two-thirds of the population lives below the poverty line. The economy depends mainly on agriculture, fish, cashew nuts and ground nuts are its major exports. A long period of political instability has resulted in depressed economic activity deteriorating social conditions, and increased macroeconomic imbalances. It takes longer on average to register a new business in Guinea-Bissau, 233 days or about 33 weeks, than in any other country in the world except Suriname. Guinea-Bissau has started to show some economic advances after a pact of stability was signed by the main political parties of the country, leading to an IMF-backed structural reform program. The key challenges for the country in the period ahead are to achieve fiscal discipline, rebuild public administration, improve the economic climate for private investment, and promote economic diversification. After the country became independent from Portugal in 1974 due to the Portuguese colonial war and the Carnation Revolution, the rapid exodus of the Portuguese civilian, military, and political authorities resulted in considerable damage to the country's economic infrastructure, social order, and standard of living. After several years of economic downturn and political instability, in 1997, Guinea-Bissau entered the CFA franc monetary system, bringing about some internal monetary stability. The civil war that took place in 1998 and 1999, and a military coup in September 2003 again disrupted economic activity, leaving a substantial part of the economic and social infrastructure in ruins and intensifying the already widespread poverty. Following the parliamentary elections in March 2004 and presidential elections in July 2005, the country is trying to recover from the long period of instability, despite a still fragile political situation. Beginning around 2005, drug traffickers based in Latin America began to use Guinea-Bissau, along with several neighboring West African nations, as a transshipment point to Europe for cocaine. The nation was described by a United Nations official as being at risk for becoming a narco-state. The government and the military have done little to stop drug trafficking, which increased after the 2012 coup d'etat. Guinea-Bissau is a member of the Organization for the Harmonization of Business Law in Africa, AHADA. According to, Guinea-Bissau's population was in, compared to 518,000 in 1950. The proportion of the population below the age of 15 in 2010 was 41.3%, 55.4% were aged between 15 and 65 years of age, while 3.3% were aged 65 years or older. The population of Guinea-Bissau is ethnically diverse and has many distinct languages, customs, and social structures. Bissau Guineans can be divided into the following ethnic groups Most of the remainder are mestizos of mixed Portuguese and African descent, including a Cape Verdean minority. Portuguese natives comprise a very small percentage of Bissau Guineans. After Guinea-Bissau gained independence, most of the Portuguese nationals left the country. The country has a tiny Chinese population. These include traders and merchants of mixed Portuguese and Chinese ancestry from Macau, a former Asian Portuguese colony. Main cities in Guinea-Bissau include. Despite being a small country Guinea-Bissau has several ethnic groups which are very distinct from each other, with their own cultures and languages. This is due that Guinea-Bissau was a refugee territory due to migrations within Africa. Colonization and miscegenation brought Portuguese and the Portuguese Creole, the Creole or Criolo. Although perceived as one of the national languages of Guinea-Bissau since independence, standard Portuguese is spoken mostly as a second language, with few native speakers and often confined to the intellectual and political elites. It is the language of government and national communication as a legacy of colonial rule. Portuguese is the only language with official status, schooling from primary to university levels is conducted in Portuguese although only 67% of children have access to any formal education. 
Data suggested the number of Portuguese speakers ranges from 11 to 15 percent. The Portuguese Creole is spoken by 44 percent, which is effectively the national language of communication among distinct groups for most of the population. The Creole is still expanding, and it is understood by the vast majority of the population. However, decreolization processes are occurring, due to undergoing interference from standard Portuguese and the Creole forms a continuum of varieties with the standard language, the most distant are Basilettes and the closer ones, Acrolex. A post-Creole continuum exists in Guinea-Bissau and Creole-Olewa, soft Creole, variety being closer to the Portuguese language norm. The remaining rural population speaks a variety of native African languages unique to each ethnicity, Fula. 16%, Balanta, 14%, Mandinka, 7%, Manjaco, 5%, Papel, 3%, Thelup, 1%, Bifata, 0.7%, Bijago, 0.3%, and Nalu, 0.1%, which form the ethnic African languages spoken by the population. Most Portuguese and Mestizo speakers also have one of the African languages and Creole as additional languages. Ethnic African languages are not discouraged, in any situation, despite their lower prestige. These languages are the link between individuals of the same ethnic background and daily used in villages, between neighbors or friends, traditional and religious ceremonies, and also used in contact between the urban and rural populations. However, none of these languages are dominant in Guinea-Bissau. French is taught as a foreign language in schools because Guinea-Bissau is surrounded by French-speaking nations. Guinea-Bissau is a full member of the Francophonie. In 2010, a Pew Research survey found that Christianity is practiced by 62% of the country's population, with Muslims making up the remaining 38%. Most of Guinea-Bissau's Muslims are of the Sunni denomination with approximately 2% belonging to the Ahmadiyya sect. Many residents practice syncretic forms of Islamic and Christian faiths. Combining their practices with traditional African beliefs. Muslims dominate the north and east, while Christians dominate the south and coastal regions. The Roman Catholic Church claims most of the Christian community. Other estimates claim that Christianity is not the dominant religion as there are 45% Muslims, 31% animists, and 22% Christians. However, according to World Atlas, Christianity is considered to be growing in the country, especially among the followers of traditional religions. See Health in Guinea-Bissau. Education is compulsory from the age of 7 to 13. Preschool education for children between 3 and 6 years of age is optional and in its early stages. There are five levels of education, preschool, elemental and complementary basic education, general and complementary secondary education, general secondary education, technical and professional teaching, and higher education, university and non-universities. Basic education is under reform and now forms a single cycle, comprising six years of education. Secondary education is widely available and there are two cycles 7th to 9th class and 10th to 11th class. Professional education in public institutions is non-operational, however private school offerings opened, including the Centro de Formação São João Albasco, since 2004, and the Centro de Formação Luís Inácio Lula da Silva, since 2011. Higher education is limited and most prefer to be educated abroad, with students preferring to enroll in Portugal. A number of universities, to which an institutionally autonomous faculty of law as well as a faculty of medicine. Child labor is very common. The enrollment of boys is higher than that of girls. In 1998, the gross primary enrollment rate was 53.5%, with higher enrollment ratio for males, 67.7%, compared to females. 40%. Non-formal education is centered on community schools and the teaching of adults. In 2011 the literacy rate was estimated at 55.3%, 68.9% male, and 42.1% female. Usually, the many different ethnic groups in Guinea-Bissau coexist peacefully, but when conflicts do erupt, they tend to revolve around access to land. The music of Guinea-Bissau is usually associated with the polyrhythmic gumba genre the country's primary musical export. However, civil unrest and other factors have combined over the years to keep gumba, and other genres, out of mainstream audiences, even in generally syncretist African countries. The calabash is the primary musical instrument of Guinea-Bissau, 
and is used in extremely swift and rhythmically complex dance music. Lyrics are almost always in Guinea Bissau Creole, a Portuguese based Creole language, and are often humorous and topical, revolving around current events and controversies. The word gumba is sometimes used generically to refer to any music of the country, although it most specifically refers to a unique style that fuses about and of the country's folk music traditions. Tina and Tinga are other popular genres, while extant folk traditions include ceremonial music used in funerals, initiations and other rituals, as well as Balanta Brasca and Kusunde, Mandinga Jambadan, and the Kundar sound of the Bisagos Islands. Rice is a staple in the diet of residents near the coast and millet a staple in the interior. Fruits and vegetables are commonly eaten along with cereal grains. The Portuguese encouraged peanut production. Vinha subterranea, Bombara groundnut, and Macrotoloma geocarpum, Hausa groundnut, are also grown. Black eyed peas are also part of the diet. Palm oil is harvested. Common dishes include soups and stews. Common ingredients include yams, sweet potato, cassava, onion, tomato, and plantain. Spices, peppers, and chilies are used in cooking including Aphromomum malagueta seeds, guinea pepper. Flora Gomez is an internationally renowned film director, his most famous film is Nya Fala. Gomez's Mortunega, Death Denied, 1988, was the first fiction film and the second feature film ever made in Guinea-Bissau. The first feature film was Ntiradu, by director Umbanukist in 1987, at Fespico 1989, Mortunega won the prestigious Uma Uganda Prize. In 1992, Gomez directed Yuju Asul de Yanta, which was screened in the UN Certain Regards section at the 1992 Cannes Film Festival. Gomez has also served on the boards of many Africa-centric film festivals. Football is the most popular sport in Guinea-Bissau. The Guinea-Bissau national football team is the national team of Guinea-Bissau and is controlled by the Federação de Futebol de Guinea-Bissau. They are a member of the Confederation of African Football (CAF) and FIFA. Other football clubs include the Sport of Oquelele, FC Catacumba, FC Catacumba São Domingos, FC Capilu Gabu, FC Giraf, FC Probis and FC Babaque. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.